Ryan, good morning. We have talked a lot about this $4.7 trillion in global cash on the sidelines. What makes you convinced that it may come back and come back to stocks? Well, Brian, you know, I was calling about a V-shaped recovery back on your show back in April, um, you know, right in the belly of the beast. And, you know, one of my thesis was that liquidity was just going to pump the markets up. And we're here. I mean, if you look at it right now, big tech obviously going through the roof this year. But I think the one thing that most people are missing in their portfolio is not factoring in a weak dollar. And that's just pushed so many other asset classes up. I mean, if you look at commodities right now, they're literally going up every single day. You've got the developed markets working right now. You've got international, you've got, excuse me, emerging markets going up. So, I mean, we're literally in the middle of this summer melt up right now, Brian. Where do you think the money's going to go? You think it's going to go back to, you know, it used to be the nifty 50 back in the 60s and 70s with regards to stocks. Do you think it's going to go to the, the, the big four or five, the same stocks that it's been going to for the last decade, Ryan? I think that's what we've seen so far, Brian, and it's getting a little bit crazy at this point. I mean, if you start looking at the big five, they've literally added a third to their capitalization this year alone. And I start looking at their profits have gone up by, let's say, like two, twofold. Their stocks have gone up by like fivefold over the last five years. So, I mean, you definitely have a disconnect now between valuation and basically the price of those stocks. So money can continue to go there, and we've seen that. But I think, you know, it's a big mistake if you're going to put all your money there as well, because, you know, we've learned from the tech bubble back in 99, 2000, yeah. when the news is bad, man, those things are going to sell off aggressively. And that's going to be a very bad place to be. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We always we talk about valuations, as do the textbooks. I guess if you go to business school, that's what you learn. But I was reading an article and you'll forgive me for not remembering where, Ryan, I think it was last week with a quant you know, quantitative investor, basically a computer scientist in some ways, Matt Petition, who's saying that valuations don't matter anymore, in part because the way the market is structured. What do you think? I think in the short term, it, they don't, because, I mean, as you can see right now, big tech's the perfect example. You know, things can stay irrational longer than you and I can stay solvent. Longer term, yes, they are going to matter. At some point, they are going to matter. When that happens and the street starts focusing on earnings again, like they did back when the tech bubble burst, that's when these stocks are going to have a really painful reckoning. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, you start looking at like Warren Buffett, smartest investor of all time. You know, he's picked up about $10 billion worth of, you know, he had his, his purchase of the natural gas assets for Dominion. Uh, he also added more shares to, or Berkshire Hathaway did, to Bank of America. You know, he bought Apple a couple years ago when the valuation yeah. was reasonable. He's not buying big tech right now. He's buying boring, good old-fashioned value companies and I have to think right now, that's where the value is. Yeah, and you're supposed to buy low and sell high. I know they're, they're not sexy. Now, Warren's a long-term investor. So day traders, they're going to play the momentum. I get that. But from a long-term perspective, everybody hates energy. They hate it because it hasn't returned any money in 10 years. ESG has ignored it. The stocks, no matter what they do, tend to be down. Everybody hates fossil fuels. But you wonder... Maybe if that's the perfect excuse to buy. I mean, if Warren Buffett is buying the pipeline and natural gas storage business, one wonders if anybody else should kind of follow his lead. A hundred percent. I, you know, I think right now you've got like the buying opportunity of a lifetime, right? You've got the smartest investor in the world buying a cash flow intensive business. Because that's the other thing. I and mean, if you look at bond yields right now, Brian, I mean, you're literally getting a negative yield when you factor in inflation. Meanwhile, you've got dividend paying stocks and like energy right now. Perfect example, the most like hated place. And that's why I love it. Um, you know, at reasonable valuations right now, you know, huge cash flow. And again, last time I looked, you know, if you look at the, the global economy, it is picking up again. Uh, if you look at oil prices, I mean, they've had a magnificent move since April. And, you know, the reality of it is you have all these emerging economies and these middle classes around the world, they're going to be very, very energy dependent over the next couple of decades. It's like the perfect storm to buy energy stocks.